Hello, and welcome to A Few Minutes with the Mayor. I'm so excited today to have a special guest with us, Carmela Hines from Sirens Cafe. Hello. Before we get started, I know sometimes people are a little nervous in an interview, so I, I thought we'd start with a little icebreaker. Okay. I'm Mike Wallace, and this is 60 Minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is just very simple. What we do is we talk to people that have done innovative and creative things to make Kingman a better place. And we're actually not going to talk too much about your restaurant. We're going to talk about what's happened in downtown. Years ago, I read an article in the paper that said Sirens is opening a cafe, and I didn't know you. I remember reading it, and it, at the time, we were right in the middle of a recession, and I thought, what is she thinking? <laughs> at the time, there was very little activity in the downtown area. I think uh, the other business that seemed to be open and going well was the um, wine bar, the cellar door. And that you took that risk when so many people wait to make an investment was pretty interesting. What was really fascinating, though, is how you started this spirit of cooperation amongst the businesses. The old downtown Kingman mantra used to be, uh, my business can only succeed if yours does not. And you said, I'm not going to fight for the slice of the pie. I'm going to grow a bigger pie. So welcome to the program. If you could start as to how you got to downtown, how you selected your, the site for, for your business, and what you did to create this environment of cooperation and collaboration. Well, a lot of it happened to be that um, as our business was developing and we were renovating the building, we also became very good friends with the wine bar owners, Scott and Nancy Rhodes, and as that relationship developed, it became clear that to get more uh, traffic downtown, we needed to give them more reason to come downtown. Part of that was creating the idea of a pizza night where we would bring food over there and people could bring wine into our establishment as well. So it just became very obvious from the beginning that to make it grow, we don't need to work together. Well, I, I think it's just um, amazing that that approach turned out to be so successful. I think I read on Facebook this morning, I see downtown businesses that might actually be considered competitors of each other actually promoting each other's events. I, I know that's done in other communities, but uh, I want to say congratulations for, for you uh, bringing that concept to the downtown area. I've, I've never seen anything like it. It was down. Uh, over the weekend and people going door to door to door and it used to be the only way I could succeed is if you didn't. Well I think a lot of um, businesses not only in our community but in other downtown businesses are realizing that you need to work together. For a downtown to be successful there needs to be more than one place to go out to eat and more places than just one to have a, a drink. So people will come to that area and spend more time and more money, even going back and forth to the different establishments in, in one evening. It's, it's, it's fantastic that, that you guys have actually created an entertainment district, if you will. That's been very exciting to see that grow and to see that, that cooperation. Some thoughts on where you see the future of downtown Kingman? I think that it's just going to continue to uh, be a center for, there's more room for art. I think with our wide streets, we have a lot of opportunity for people to stop. We have situated perfectly for people that are driving through 166 and the 40 and so forth between the canyon and um, Las Vegas is a great place to stop. We have beautiful parks downtown, a great place to fill up on gas, get something to eat, stay the evening, and go downtown and enjoy some local entertainment. Wonderful. And what do you see happening in the future? Do you see more, more development in the downtown area? Absolutely. Absolutely. There's lots of room for development. Uh, there's a lot of homes down here that are just beautiful and historic. People will be moving here and hopefully opening a lot more businesses. How exciting. Well, I, I learned about your willingness to cater across the street, if you will. It was some years ago, probably. How long have you been open? Nine, nine years Nine years, now. so probably right around nine years ago, we didn't have a place to host our book club anymore, and one of the book club members suggested that we use the uh, cellar door uh, as a facility and that you would cater it. And I thought, are you kidding? She's actually gonna be 
bringing food across the street. And sure enough, and it's it's been a, a great, great opportunity, and we've enjoyed it for going on nine years. It's been a while. I've been hauling food across the street for <laughs> nine years now. <laughs> so tell us how you got to Kingman, how you chose your location, and what your background is. Well, originally I'm from Southern California and have been to culinary arts school in Italy and, and got my actual degree in hotel restaurant management from NAU. I've had a family in Arizona and California for quite some time and have lived between the both of them. So when it came down to it, after graduating, I wanted to be by that beach again and started to work in, in the field of hotel restaurant management and really discovered that my heart was in Kingman, my heart was in the restaurant business, and really there's not a lot of opportunity for someone in their late 20s to be opening a business beachside in Southern California. <laughs> uh, so financially it wasn't really feasible and Kingman allowed a lot of opportunity for that. There was um, room for development, obviously, in the downtown areas we were talking about, it was a recession. So it became a just great opportunity for a young business person to get out there and, and try something. Well, and, and congratulations. Like I said, you didn't make so much as make an investment as you really took a risk. And we, <laughs> yeah. we appreciate that. And, you know, you've got nine years in. I, I, think, I think you're all right. I'm feeling good I, about it. I think it was the right choice. Perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> so having said that, why don't you tell us a little something about us that we might not know. I think you and I had a conversation one time about one thing that you might have in your kitchen that is completely incongruous, that doesn't match anything else. And I told you my story in, in my pantry. I, I don't know why it's there. It's a little plastic Scooby-Doo cup that I keep all my garlic cloves in. I don't know where this <laughs> cup came from. <laughs> I don't know why I haven't disposed of it, <laughs> but it's there. And now it's sentimental. No, it now is. you wouldn't do anything else without it. Uh, in our kitchen at the restaurant, I think it started maybe as a little joke, but uh, a friend, local artist, Jake Corson, went in and put a rubber ducky on our ceiling. And it's just posted, just always looking down on us. And it's never fallen. And heaven, if it would, were to fall, we definitely have to put it back up. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. At this point, it's an institution. It's an art installation. Oh, that's great. <laughs> well, Carmel, I can't thank you enough for being here today. And I certainly appreciate all you've done to benefit the downtown. And you're yet another reason we're all so proud to call Kingman home. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.